Hi there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech, my name is Alan. Last episode, we looked at the evolution of Mandalorian culture by mixing in the pieces of legends and canon that don't contradict. Today we'll be returning to one of my favorite planets in the galaxy, Coruscant, and looking at its evolution. Coruscant is actually not in the physical center of the galaxy. As a matter of fact, it's not even in the deep core, which is full of gigantic ancient stars and massive black holes. But it does sit in the economic and arguably the cultural center of the galaxy. It's no coincidence that several major hyperspace lanes run right through it, including the Perlimian Way and Corellian Run. And on Star Charts, Coruscant enjoys the privilege of being labeled as 000 and is widely known by spacers as the Triple Zero. Coruscant is also on a short list of the potential homeworlds of one of the most important races in the entire Star Wars galaxy, humanity. Before Coruscant became a Seminopolis covered in several miles deep of durasteel and duracrete, it was a natural world not all that different from Earth. Coruscant had a diameter of 12,240 kilometers, only 500 kilometers less than our own planet. It also had a silicate crust, rocky mantle and molten core, ice on the poles, and 24 hour days and 368 days in a year. Legends say 200,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the planet was known as Notron, and it was home to two species, the Twang and the Zell. The Twang were gray-skinned, and we mentioned them in our last video because they started the Mandalorian warrior culture. No one really is sure who the Zell were or what they looked like, but they're assumed to be the ancestors of the human race. The only records we have of them come through ancient poetry and ancient stories. The Zell were made up of 13 nations which formed the battalions of Zell and together they fought against the Twang. Eventually the Zell managed to defeat the Twang and drive them off the planet and become the sole inhabitants of the planet. The Zell would continue developing Coruscant and started building some of the first skyscrapers on the planet. Archaeologists believe that the P-Trax Historical Center in the northern area of the Galactic City is an example of some of the earliest skyscrapers ever built on this planet. 100,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, an advanced Kalumi species observed the planet now known as Coruscant, but saw it as primitive. 90,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Gree arrived on Coruscant, and here is where we see the first records of the word human being mentioned. Shortly after the Gree arrived, the human population would explode. With the Gree's help, advanced infrastructure was developed to provide services across the planet, including atmospheric scrubbers, water, power, and waste management, recycling plants, and gigantic hydroponic farms. At this time, the Galactic City began expanding upwards as a tiered city. The infrastructure that the Grey helped the humans create would continue to get buried under more layers of the city and help keep the planet running for many thousands of years. By that time, the infrastructure would simply be known as the works. It was around this time that the Coruscanti began launching their garbage and flat Coruscant believers into a nearby star in waste containers. This was in order to conserve the increasingly valuable space left on the planet. 30,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Rakan Infinite Empire found Coruscant and invaded it. The Rakans would go on to invent some of the most important technologies in the Star Wars galaxy, including lightsabers, hyperdrives, and battle droids. But just like the most toxic YouTube commenters, all Rakan technology was powered by the dark side of the Force, which in turn was powered by suppressed emotions, broken dreams, and excessive amounts of junk food. The humans were enslaved by the Rakans and shipped across the Rakan Infant Empire, which is one of the main reasons why so many planets in the core region of the galaxy have native human populations. Eventually, a terrible plague swept across the Rakan Empire, disconnecting the aliens from the Force, rendering their technology useless. Within a few generations, the Rakan Empire was all but destroyed, and the Rakan species returned to their previous primitive form. By 25,200 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Coruscanti had retaken their planet and reverse-engineered many of the technologies that the Rakatans had left behind. The Coruscanti developed sleeper ships with cryo chambers and began exploring the known galaxy, seeding many different planets in the mid and eventually outer rims. By 25,053 years before the Battle of Yavin, Coruscant was in contact with several worlds, including Duros, Alderaan, Corellia, and already establishing itself as the galactic center for trade, culture, and eventually politics. Right around this time, the Unification War happened, although historians aren't really sure who fought on what side in this war, but the historical records seem to state that the Jedi were involved in some battle against the so-called forces of evil, which kind of sounds like Jedi propaganda and the genocide of force users who don't seem to agree with them. Anyway, out of the Unification War, the Galactic Constitution was ratified, which signaled the start of the First Galactic Republic. The Constitution outlined a balanced system with an executive, legislative, and judicial branch. 
It also introduced the right of sentience, which outlawed slavery and foolishly declared all sentient beings in the galaxy as equal. It also ensured some basic rights to all sentient beings within the Republic, although it doesn't seem to take the right for one sentient being to eat another one, which oddly enough would fulfill one's individual pursuit of happiness, but would prevent the other individual who's now in someone's stomach to pursue their own happiness. Coruscant would become the capital of this new fledgling galactic republic. In the next few hundred years, Coruscant scientists along with other human scientists would develop some of the first FTL travel devices, including hyperspace cannons which shot ships from Coruscant to Alderaan, Duro, Corellia, and other core worlds. And in around 25,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Corellians finally reverse-engineered the Rakan hyperdrive, rapidly expanding space exploration and bringing new planets into the Republic. 24,500 years before the Battle of Yavin, Coruscant got caught in the Great Schism, which was a civil war fought between the Jedi and the legions of Leto. This would become one of the first of many wars between the Jedi and the Dark Side of the Force. 24,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Tionis, who were originally Coruscanti colonists who had arrived into the Outer Rim on sleeper ships, launched an aggressive campaign down the Perlimian trade route and eventually made it to Coruscant and bombarded the surface with pressure bombs. The Republic launched a newly created fleet and drove the Tionis back to their own colonies. It was around this time that the Republic City, one of the larger cities on the planet's surface, began engulfing all the other gigantic cities on the world and formed the worldwide city known as Galactic City. Only one other planet rivaled Coruscant during this period of time, and that was Alsacon. It was a former Coruscant colony and one of the founding members of the Galactic Republic. Alsacon was the gateway to the planets along the Perlimian trade route in the Northern Dependencies. The Alsacons had favored a much more looser economic alliance instead of the more encompassing and bureaucratic Galactic Republic. They soon began resenting Coruscant and all of the other core worlds in the Arrowhead region, otherwise known as the Spin. Soon the Alsacon began uniting with its allies on the Perlimian Way, and they would become known as the Axis. Soon the planets in the Axis and merchants from the Spin began fighting over resource-rich planets between the two regions, which would lead to the first of 17 Alsacon Coruscant Wars in the next 14,000 years. 15,500 years before the Battle of Yavin, Republic scouts in the outer rim of the galaxy discovered the Dino Gwyn. These were gigantic fire-breathing reptiles. They terrified the scouts and they opened fire and the gigantic space dragons followed them back to Coruscant. Instead of attacking them, the Chancellor at the time, Phil Loren, decided to try to negotiate a peace with the gigantic space dragons. Fortunately, they were actually intelligent and quite peaceful. Together, the leader of the space dragons and the Supreme Chancellor established the first University of Coruscant. Funny enough, that origin story is very similar to Penn State's. 12,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, further educational infrastructure was created when the Galactic Museum was built. It would become an archive for all galactic history. 5,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Great Hyperspace War occurred. According to the canon, during the Battle of Coruscant, the Sith constructed a dark shrine over an immensely powerful force nexus in one of the mountains on the planet. The Sith were eventually driven off the planet, and the Republic were extremely grateful for the sacrifices the Jedi had made. They allowed them to build a gigantic temple complex on the same force nexus that the Sith had built their shrine on. It's believed that the Jedi had attempted to contain the dark side shrine, but instead it slowly corrupted the order over the years, blinding them and eventually leading them to their downfall. In 3996, the Great Sith War occurred and Sith and Mandalorian forces overran Republic defenses on the planet. But soon their offensive was repelled due to treachery amongst the Sith forces. During the Mandalorian Wars, Coruscant managed to escape major damage from the Neo-Crusader advance. 3,653, in the middle of the Sith advance on the Galactic Republic during the Great Galactic War, the Sith surprisingly offered to negotiate a peace with the Republic on the planet of Alderaan. While negotiations were in process, a group of 50 Sith landed on Coruscant and attacked the Jedi Temple, followed by a gigantic Sith fleet. They managed to cast the Republic and its Jedi Guardians off guard, destroying the Temple and killing most of its defenders. The Senate complex was also overrun, and the Chancellor of the Republic was assassinated. And under duress, the Republic signed the controversial Treaty of Coruscant. The Republic would give the Sith many of its Outer Rim territories, while the Sith would give Coruscant back to the Republic. This would end the Great Galactic War and start the Cold War period, which would last for another 10 years. 
The Jedi eventually returned to Coruscant and cleaned all the feces I imagine the Sith had laid in the ruins of the Jedi Temple and rebuilt it. From 2,000 years before the Battle of Yavin to 1,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the new Sith Wars would rage between the Sith and the Jedi-led Republic. During this millennia, the Republic would experience a massive decline. By 1,100 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Republic was just a few planets that surrounded the Coruscant region of the center of the galaxy. The Jedi became increasingly militant and miraculously were able to defeat the Sith after repeated battles on the planet of Rusan. With the Sith destroyed after a millennia of continuous war, the Rusan Reformation was passed demilitarizing the Republic and Jedi Order. For the next thousand years, the Republic and Coruscant would experience a period of peace, and the Republic quickly expanded in size and became bloated, corrupted, and paralyzed by bureaucracy. Coruscant would be the center of all of it. With the removal of Chancellor Finnis Valorum, she, Palpatine, would take over and saw the Republic through the Clone Wars. Coruscant suffered several small attacks during the war, including one by a gigantic Zillow beast, and one large attack during the Battle of Coruscant when General Grievous and Count Dooku led Separatist forces against the Grand Army of the Republic. Palpatine incrementally increased the executive branch's power and eventually transformed the Republic into the Galactic Empire. During this transition, Coruscant became known as the Imperial Center, and many existing Republic and Jedi buildings were repurposed for the Empire. As unrest in the rebellion grew in size during the Galactic Civil War, Coruscant also became a hotbed for rebel activity. In the Coruscant underworld, many districts were in open rebellion, especially due to the high amount of non-humans that lived there. They found the Empire's human-centric views and laws to be a bit distasteful. After the Battle of Endor, Coruscant security forces lost control of most of the surface of the planet and were limited to the Imperial City. Maz Amida, the only remaining Imperial leader left to negotiate with the New Republic, signed the Galactic Concordance Treaty and ceded control of Coruscant. The New Republic believed that every planet in the Republic should be given a chance to serve as the host of the New Republic, which luckily saved Coruscant from being Hosnian primed. So guys, that's the evolution of Coruscant. We used legends and canon material that didn't contradict each other. Because who knows what canon we'll borrow next from legends in the near future. Also, I think it's really interesting to see what will happen to Coruscant now that Hosnian Prime has been destroyed. And I also wonder what's happening on Coruscant during the events of the new trilogy. I for one would love to see the new Mandalorian TV show have a few story arcs there. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button. As usual, if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.